All right, let's see how this works. for a great little ride and a new toy. Works pretty good. Uh, we had a good run here so far and uh, just out here, local local park nearby. Took it out for a run and uh, it's working out pretty good. Got, a, uh, got quite the story of how we got to this point, how it's running the way it is. Here's the story. So the story starts on Kijiji. We uh, was looking for a trail touring deluxe. I looked at this one, it disappeared, it was sold. I went to go look at this one, I had an appointment to go see him. Eventually this one popped up on the 8th of January. It was a little bit short. Uh, I was able to go take a look at it after someone else cancelled. Um, and, and the sled was in good condition. It looked good. The ad mentioned that it had been stored indoors and it was in very good condition. Price was a little bit higher than um, you would expect, but when I went out and I looked around and I did some comparatives, the value for the miles that were on it seemed to be fair. I went out, I checked over the sled from top to bottom, I compression tested both cylinders. Both cylinders came in at 120 each and equal. Everything I could tell after the ride the sled worked. The sled worked until I got home. We took it out for a quick ride and then I flooded it. Um, I wasn't able to get it started again. Uh, it was bogging down. It was having some real issues keeping going. Now the gentleman I bought it from did mention that it probably had <clears throat> bad gas in it. So I drained out the gas in the tank. I put new gas in, added new stabilizer in it. I did that all before I took it out for a short run. I went after the run, we were having difficulties, so I figured, well, if there was bad gas, the carbs must be cleaned. These are the carburetors. I took them apart, I cleaned them, went through them, and the carbs were not that bad. In this one, you can see a few little items in the float bowl. Um, you know, one cylinder was really wet, the other cylinder was dry. So I took it over to a friend's. Lo and behold, as you can see, we pulled the engine, we opened up the head, and we went in, and we noticed there was a lot of chipping and cracking uh, uh, pits in one of the pistons. And when we went in underneath, we could start through the intake. What could we see? Well, we could start to see, feel through there, the edge of the piston was not sealing the intake side on the PTO. And here's why. So you can see half the piston's missing. So when I figured out, I asked, I said, so did I buy it this way? Or did I do it in my short amount of miles? Because 3751 is what I bought it at. I didn't do it wasn't based on me that caused it. This uh, from the mechanic and everyone, I bought it that way. I bought an engine with one piston. It was able to make 45 miles an hour on its top end. And as a result of that, that is uh, w what I bought. I bought a, a sled with one running cylinder. And um, you know, now what I have is, I have a real good paperweight here. Nice, huh? So. My used sled that was uh, $3,700, I'm now into it for over $6,000. So um, buyer beware, uh, obviously, on the bill of sale, you can see right there, it says as is, where is, uh, with no warranties, no guarantees. Although, if you know you got something wrong in something, and you kind of hide it and pass it off on someone else, what type of person does that really make you? I've got a sled. I took it out for a run today after having the motor rebuilt. I have a zero re zero time motor now. Uh, it's now got 11 miles on it. Uh, sled was nice. It ran really good. I was quite a, uh, quite impressed with the motor. Real big thank you to the boys out at Sabetsky's in Bozizer, uh, the Polaris dealer out there. If you're looking for any help or assistance out in that area, I can't recommend the guys out there enough. And uh, fixing this. All right, have a good one. I'm going to go have some fun with my toy. Ready?